Less than 50 years ago, uh, a man named Marshall McLuhan came up with a very, very controversial statement. He said, the medium was the message. 50 years later, when we look back and study the arguments and the issues involving this so-called controversial statement of McLuhan, we realize that this whole idea has become completely antiquated, if not dated. In less than 50 years, we know that all arguments pointing to the fact that the medium is the message is beyond question and beyond argumentation. As a matter of fact, if we look at it today, the medium is not only the message. The medium defines the messenger. Now, what do I exactly mean by that? What do I mean by the medium defining the messenger? Who we are is not only based on what we say, but who we are is also defined by how we say it and by the fashion in which we gather information to be able to come up with messages. Let me go a bit further. More important is the fact that there is not one single individual in this room or perhaps in any sphere of civilized society who can say that he or she is not affected or is not engulfed by media. Now, I dare question anyone in this room as to who would feel a moment of absolute discomfort or discombobulation by any opportunity in which you become detached to any channel of information. I, I think a simple case would be when we have our uh, traditional Filipino blackouts and brownouts and we find ourselves completely panicking because we have to find ways to recharge our telephones. We suddenly realize we are not connected to the internet. We suddenly realize that we have no access to information. The moment we wake up, the moment we wake up, up to that last moment when we sign off from our consciousness for the day, we cannot help but be engulfed and be affected by media. Kanina binabanggeta, no? when we were discussing the future of cities, that uh, indeed, even as we travel inside our cars and we see uh, the world through our windshield, we are barraged by information, we are barraged by billboards, we listen to the radio, and at the same time, we receive text messages. We watch movies and TV shows from our telephone, and there is not any single moment in which we cannot accept information. What makes matter far worse is that um, we have reached that point that attachment to information becomes a manner of survival. We can no longer exist without any connection to information. We cannot exist without the presence of media. The moment we cut off ourselves from media, we feel that we do not only cut ourselves off from other people, but we cut ourselves off from the rest of the world. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite a discombobulating thought when you come to think of it, okay? When you really come to think of it. Like, um, media does not only define who we are, but media somehow shows how we tend to fit in, okay, to the rest of the world. Media defines how we are linked up with the rest of the world in the same manner that the rest of the world makes us feel and validate our human existence by being linked to information. Um, but then there is nothing wrong with that. That is the whole point and premise of media. Um, let us remember uh, the whole idea of sharing information, the whole idea of gathering together as a community came about with various religious rituals which existed in the past, which became the forefather of theater and which eventually became also the platform for media information. In other words, by sharing information with other members of the community, we feel that we are not only ourselves part of the community, but we contribute as a living organism to a living community. We are conditioned okay, by fast-changing shifts in the world 
by our ability to gain access to every piece of information that is given to us, whether it is inane or it is sublime or whether it is esoteric. In other words, media provides proof of our identities because of what we partake as well as what we absorb. From this shared experience, we gain not only our individual identity, but we also feel ourselves as part of a much larger community. But lo and behold, this is slowly but surely changing. And I will refer to a year in which this became so well marked and the direction of our perception of media and self took such a great change. And this was in 1979. Now, what was significant about the year 1979? That was the first time that the Walkman was made available to the world market. I need not address the possibilities of how the Walkman changed the way we perceived and the way we appreciated music. Before the Walkman, music was meant to be shared. Music was meant to be appreciated, not only by a single individual, but for anybody who is accessible to the sound that the music creates. But the Walkman became something practical. It became something so extremely portable. So much so that you want to enjoy music by yourself without having to interrupt the world of others. And what resulted is a unique individual experience of sharing very portable entertainment. You love your music, you appreciate your music, but in the process, you cut yourself off from the rest of the world. You block off all the other sounds around you. Oh, two years later, another innovation completely changed too, our uh, perception of music. Uh, this was in 1981 when MTV had its first telecast. Not only did we appreciate music as a solo experience, but now music is not only being heard. Music had to be seen. All of a sudden, music is not only a question of how good the sound sounds, but rather how the singer looks like and how the music is packaged. All of a sudden, music became an audiovisual experience, so much so that it created a phenomena of sometimes really lame music just so well packaged but made to look beautiful. All of a sudden, music was not merely an auditory experience, but it had a visual production value. Oh, but then as early as the 1920s, something else greatly developed. It was called television. Okay? It, it flourished greatly in the uh, 1950s when suddenly it became an alternative entertainment in the first world. Um, television was interesting in the sense that it gathered people together in a room to share a common experience through a narrative or through a show which was meant to be consumed by an entire family. Oh, television shows became so popular that it threatened movies. It threatened cinema. Television became such a big thing, so much so that, um, that, that cinema houses had to create all kinds of technological innovations like Cinemascope, Technicolor, Todao. In other words, all kinds of embellishments to be able to attract back uh, the audiences to cinema houses. Well, fortunately, television did not kill cinema, but television compelled cinema to try a bit harder and to innovate a bit more. Okay, a, a little sidebar. Uh, don't, uh, the, the, by the way, uh, the first 3D innovations came at about this time too.